Hey gear seekers, I'm Nick. As Rock sent over this little thing here, it's called the Deskmate X300. It's a small form factor bare bones PC coming in at about eight liters and accepts anything from a Ryzen 2000 up to 5000 CPU. But the only thing is you need a 65 watt CPU to go in here because of cooler clearances. So what we're gonna do today is obviously we're gonna do a build. I'm gonna test a few things in this, but first we need to go and get a 65 watt Ryzen chip because I don't have one, so let's go shopping. All right, we're off to Scorpy Boy to pick up a Ryzen 5 5500. The reason why I'm going with the 5500, there's a couple reasons. The first reason is it's really cheap right now. So 209 Aussie dollars. I don't know how many uh, freedom dollars that is, but it's very cheap here at the moment. It's a six core, 12 threaded CPU. Not only that, the Deskmate X300 only supports PCIe Gen 3. This is one of the only Zen 3 chips that will only do PCIe Gen 3 as well. So I figured, you know what? What's the point in getting a chip that doesn't support it? And this is gonna be a good CPU if we decide to do some more budget focused content in the near future. Let's uh, pick up the CPU that we ordered. Ryzen 5, 5500. There you go, Claire, you want it? Here's a present. Thank you. CPU acquired, let's get inside it. Wait, what? The, the computer. Oh. <laughs> what, what are you being rude for? In the box, there's a bunch of screws to get yourself up and running. This is to mount the power supply, any additional drives. There's also some rubber feet if you wanted to tip the desk meat on its side because you can mount it like that if you like. There's also some SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. These are very short and the reason basically is because it's a small chassis so they don't need to be very long and they only mount in a certain place which we'll look at in a sec. And lastly, the power cable which is a US power cable so I can't use this one so it doesn't really matter. Getting inside the desk mate is really easy. There's only a single screw on the bottom of the case and just remove that screw. And then what you do is you basically just grab the back and you can slide the whole internals of the desk mate out. You'll also notice there is a power supply that is in here that's not installed, but it is floating inside some watermelon. Spoiler alert, it's not watermelon at all. It does look like watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> Included is an ATX power supply. It's a 500 watt power supply. It is 80 plus bronze and it's got all these ketchup and mustard cables, whatever. It's fine, like it's no big deal. It doesn't really matter. You're never gonna see the inside of this anyway. Some pretty standard stuff, you've got your 24 pin power connector. You've got a single EPS power connector, a single PCIe power connector for a GPU and two SATA connectors for powering your drives if that's what you wanted to do. But yeah, a very basic power supply, which is fine, it's all you need. The Deskmate X300 has an ITX board, however, this is an extended ITX board, so if you just take a look at the screws here, this is usually where an ITX board would end, but as you can see, this has got four DIMM slots, so you can actually install double the amount of memory that you can on a regular ITX board. It's got a single by 16 PCIe slot. It's got an AM4 socket, which supports from Ryzen 2000 all the way up to Ryzen 5000, including all of the APUs. There's also an M.2 slot, which is PCIe Gen 3. That's the same as the PCIe slot as well. And also another M.2 Wi-Fi slot, which you can put a Wi-Fi adapter in. It does have provisions on the case itself for allowing you to install those antennas, but we're not gonna be doing that in this video, unfortunately, which is fine, like it's no big deal. You'll notice the AM4 socket also has standard cooler mounting for any type of AM4 cooler, but be aware, you do have a maximum cooler height that cannot be over 54 millimeters, otherwise the power supply is not gonna fit. You can also install an SFX power supply in here if you like, because it does have the provisions for it on the back of the case, but I would suggest going with the power supply that's already installed. Like it just doesn't make sense to put your own in, unless you've got some weird type of edge case. This may be a bit tricky to see, but you've got your additional drive mounts here, so you can mount up to two additional drives on the outside of the chassis. All the screws are included to do this as well. You do what you gotta do, right? You gotta fix that sink. <laughs> In terms of GPU support, you've got a maximum size of 200 millimeters. 
I've got the Azrock Challenger ITX card. This is the Radiant RX 6400. And this is the card that we'll be using when we do all the testing and whatnot in here. So yeah, I mean, not a lot of space here for GPUs, but you're also usually quite limited with these ITX GPUs as well. There's only a couple that have ever come through here. And in terms of the width of the GPU, some of them are like 2.1 or 2.2 slot. So that should fit, I would say in here, but anything wider than that, I think you, you're gonna be shit out of luck. There are some other random things you can do, like you can mount a fan here if you like, there's provisions for that, but because we're not going to be building like that in this system, it just doesn't make sense for us to talk about that really, but I think you can do a 120 mil fan in this spot here. One of the more interesting things you'll notice about the desk mate and the board that this uses is because it's an extended ITX board or whatever they wanna call it, it has the front IO actually on the motherboard itself. So there's no cables plugged in. You're actually seeing the other side of the motherboard. I thought that was quite interesting. I would like to see more cases support stuff like this because I think this is very, very cool. Obviously in terms of the power switch and whatnot, that is a cable plugged into the board, but the audio jack, the USB type C and the USB type A ports, that is very cool that it's like that. Because this isn't an overly complicated bare bones system, it's actually not gonna take us very long to build. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna build a little bit differently. We're gonna do it with a time lapse with a timer on the screen. So you can see how long it would take you to build it when you're basically just pulling it straight out of the box, right? Although the watermelon bite marks on the foam won't be included with yours. and one second to build in the desk mate. Pretty impressive, right? And that's with me having like all the parts laid out. And also I kind of took my time with it. I wasn't trying to rush the whole thing. So let's take a little bit of a look at the performance of the desk mate X300 with the components that I chose that you saw towards the start in terms of the performance for the benchmarks that we run as well. Now, so I know someone's gonna comment, oh, you should have run XYZ benchmark and blah, 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 blah. Benchmarking takes quite a while and the way that we do it also takes time. So, you know, we don't wanna spend three days testing a GPU that we're probably gonna test on its own on our GPU test bench. You can use those benchmarks on your own system to compare directly to this, which is why we do it this way. Let's start off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We ran three different resolutions and settings to what we usually ran. We ran 720p high, 1080p medium, and 1080p high as well. Now, the 1080p medium performance is just below 60 frames per second, but I would say that that is still rather playable. But at 720p, 92 frames per second is perfect. Unigen Superposition is a little bit more of a difficult one considering it is a canned benchmark and we don't really run these resolutions so we don't have that much to compare it to but if you want to know how this compares to your system you can download Superposition for free and compare it to this on your own. Same goes with Basemark GPU. We never usually run at these resolutions. It's also a free benchmark you can download yourself. Now, that's not a typo. You are seeing 429 frames per second. This is just the way that Basemark works with different types of resolutions and different texture quality. So you can get quite a wide range of results with Basemark. It's actually a good way of doing it because it shows a lot of weaknesses with some GPUs. Our one hour stress test in Ida 64, the temperatures here aren't actually too bad. I thought they were quite good considering the odd layout with the power supply on top of the CPU fan. I thought that might actually introduce some problems, but we didn't see it really affecting thermals too much. Now, a quick mention about the acoustics of this system. Now, what I did here, you'll notice that there are some max fan RPM tests as well. That's me turning everything up to 100% in the BIOS. 
With that, the fan is audible. However, when it's set to auto, the system is dead silent. Commenting on acoustic observations are far more useful than me just spitting out some decibel number that probably won't make sense to you anyway. One thing that actually stood out to me is the thermal performance of the Decimate X300 because when you look at it, you're like, hey, you need to install the PSU a certain way with the fan of the PSU basically facing the intake for the CPU fan and actually the thermal performance isn't too bad as well. It's funny because usually a product like the Decimate X300 would be a bit underwhelming, but it's an eight liter small form factor system that allows you to install a 200 mil GPU. Not only that, it's a small form factor system with four DIMM slots. Think about it, an eight liter system that can do 128 gigs of RAM. You could put a much more powerful CPU in here with a much better cooler than the factory cooler. You could then go an SFX power supply and have a super powerful system in an eight liter chassis. Now, the 6400 is an okay GPU, but we've used GPUs that we've shown on the channel, like a 3060 Ti that would fit in here. So you could build an absolute beast of a PC if you really, really wanted to. Now, what I think I wanna do, not in this video, but at another time if you guys are interested, is whack a much more powerful CPU, even though they recommend a 65 watt chip, and a much beefier cooler and an SFX power supply and actually put that to the test. Let us know if that's something you guys wanna see because it's something that I want to do and if you guys really want it, we'll make it happen. The biggest elephant in the room is the price. Now, they announced this back in, I think it was January this year. I've started to see people get their hands on them now, like YouTubers only. Um, I don't know what the price is and I don't know anything about the availability of the X300. Now, I don't think it's gonna to be too expensive because basically all you're buying is a case, a power supply and a motherboard. You've gotta bring your own CPU, RAM and all that stuff to the table if this is something you want to use. Now, there's a couple use cases where this could be really cool other than for gaming. And this could be potentially a really cool, really small and compact virtualization host. With an eight core APU and integrated graphics with 128 gigs of RAM, this thing could be an awesome little host for your home lab. But let us know what you think of the ASRock Decimate X300. If you like videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. In fact, here's something we wanna try, right? Here's what we're gonna do. We wanna see videos of you guys watching Gear Seekers videos, and we'll put those videos in our video of you watching us, so you can give yourself a shout out, right? Isn't that cool? Anyway, ring the bell if you want to see videos like this for notifications. YouTube is really broken, guys. You need to use the notification system if you wanna see our content. And if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music, it's available by clicking that join button down below. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm Unique. I'm your Nick boy with Seekers of the Gear. <laughs> you peak, we seek. And what do you guys think about the new studio setup? I didn't even mention anything on anywhere except by the time you watched this video, I would have probably tweeted about it, but we removed most of the storage in the studio. We've just got a couple shelves now because we needed more space. And I think this looks awesome. I love it. What do you reckon, Claire? It's it's great. I mean, we would have Claire mic'd up, but our new road mics also died too. <laughs> yeah. Here's what it's like to catch someone doing the wrong thing in 4K as well. It's my best mate, he lives next door. Where have you been? You look guilty. Caught in 4K. What's that? Guilty, guilty. <laughs>